Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to be covering the Vault Account Cleanup Checklist. I'm going to be walking you through everything you need to know, so feel free to start watching from the beginning all the way through to the end, or you can use those segments at the bottom to skip ahead to the part you're wanting help with. To start today, we're going to go over the roster review, so we're going to go over to this chapter tab and select Update Member Statuses. You can see here that it's filtering it by new member, so we can see the members with the current new member status, and we can also see their billing group, which may be helpful for you when going through your roster. In my case, for my chapter, I can see that these two members, Andrew and Simon, both are in the active billing group because they got initiated this semester, so we do need to update their member status to initiate. You can see it's already changing it to initiate if we want to do something else, like if they dropped or anything like that, we could choose disassociated or suspended. But in this case, these members were initiated, so I'll leave this as initiated, and we're going to click Update Member Statuses. Next, you can see it's going to our initiate billing group, so we can go through here and confirm that all of these members are currently on our roster. If these two members, let's say Chrissy and Maria, were both um, seniors that graduated this past semester, we can select their name, go to the top, and we're going to change them to an alumnus. And then I'm going to scroll to the bottom and click Update Member Statuses. You're going to want to go through your roster and do this for each section, and then once you're done, you'll be able to complete this step. Next, we're going to move on to the administrator update. So to do this, we're going to start by going to the chapter tab, and then we're going to click officers. Here we can see a list of our current officers. So if we need to update it, we're going to click edit officers. And in this case, we know that Colin is no longer um, going to be in his current officer title. I know it says it's going through the end of the year, but for today, I'm just going to select this and make it today's date. And then we can click Update Officer. And now we can see this is updated. So what we're going to want to do next is, again, go to Edit Officers. And we're going to want to put a new social chairman in. So I'm going to select here. And we'll say it is Noah. And we'll say the start date is today. And we will put it through. Um, maybe the end of the year, so we'll do December 1st. Let's say that's his term. We're gonna click Update Officers, click OK. And then here again, you can see that these are, um, these are updating. Now the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is go up to the top and remove their vault status. Um, and by they, I mean mainly Colin right here because we removed his officer title. Um, he technically has it through the end of the day today, which is why he's still listed, but tomorrow he'll be taken off this list. But we're going to go ahead and click this gear icon and click Vault Users. And we're going to remove his vault access anyways if he has it. So here we can see that he does have access. So all I'm going to do is click this trash can icon and click OK. This will not affect his MyOmegaFi account, so he'll still be able to log into that. It's only going to remove him from being able to log into your chapter's vault account. I can also add a user if I need to. So if I click Add User, we can select from all of our members here. You can scroll down. If I wanted to, I could select Noah, but maybe in this case, I don't think he needs vault access because he's going to be using, not going to be using it. So I'm not going to add him. But in your case, if it was a new treasurer, president, or whoever it may be that needs access to vault, you could go ahead, click Add User, and choose them from that drop-down list. The next thing we're going to want to do is also review our contacts. So you can see all of these people listed here are undergraduate officers, and you can see their title. But we can also see that there's an international staff member. So if you have international staff members, you may want to keep them just because um, they help you with your chapter. But let's say if Amanda were no longer with staff or was no longer our chapter consultant, whatever it may be, we could also select this trash can icon and remove her vault access. The next thing we're going to do is go back to the chapter tab and we're going to click contacts. So here are going to be a list of your chapter contacts. In this case, only Amanda's listed that international staff member, and we do want her to re remain on our contact list and keep her access. Um, but you may also have contacts listed that don't have all access, and this is just where you're keeping their um, contact information. I recommend you go through these, and if there were members listed, or um, I guess I shouldn't say members, but if there were administrators listed that no longer are contacts for your chapter, you can click the trash can icon. Or if you're reviewing this and you see maybe it's an old email address or your advisor, whoever it may be, wants their email address updated, you can click, uh, you can click this pencil icon and it will update it for you. 
Once these roster updates are complete, we're going to go ahead and update the billing roster. So to do that, we're going to go to the billing tab and we're going to click review roster and billing discrepancies. This is going to be a great shortcut for you to see members that have a member status that should be probably an inactive billing member as well. So that would be alumnus, suspended, disassociated. Any of those members will show up here and we can see those two members we just updated to alumnus are listed. So I'm going to select their name right here and I'm going to click update billing status. You can see it's inactive, but I do want to give a reason and it's because they're an alumnus. So I'm going to fill that in, click update billing status, and now they will be taken off our active billing roster. Once we've updated this, we can go back to the billing tab and we're going to move on to update the billing groups. So to do this, we're going to click billing and then update billing groups. You can see all of your members listed here, and then you can also see their current billing group. I recommend, again, you scroll through this and make sure everybody is in the correct group that they need to be in. If you would like to filter it, you can do it this way. So if we click active, we will only see our members that are in our active billing group. I can scroll down and confirm that all of these members need to be there. If I'm looking at this, and I know Steve would like to be put into a payment plan group, I can select his name, go to the top, and it'll let me change his billing group. So I can choose active payment plan, scroll down and click update billing group. Once you've gone through all your billing groups and confirmed everything is correct, we can move on to the next step. Going back to the billing tab, we're now gonna click member list by billing group to review your members balances. You can see here, all of your members are listed. Up at the top, it's gonna to be active billing records. And if we go all the way down to the bottom, we'll see inactive billing records. What you're going to want to do is confirm that these balances are correct or maybe reach out to your members and let them know you're reviewing balances and that they can reach out to you if they think something's incorrect. Um, one I really recommend going through, obviously all of them, but the ones we really recommend you going through are these inactive billing records. So we can see here that these members have pretty high balances, which they may be responsible for, or maybe we forgot to move them to inactive billing before they got billed. So what we can do as we can select their names, we can choose Susie, for example, and then we're gonna to go to transactions to view her charge history. So when we scroll down, we can see that she has a lot of late fees building up. So maybe she um, cut a deal with the chapter and you guys are gonna forgive these last two late fees or maybe just the most recent late fee. So we could do $7.14, we can highlight this. At least I like to highlight it, I think it's easiest. Um, and we can then go to billing, add transactions in mass. And we're going to choose her name from this list. Once we've chosen her name, we're going to choose the type as credit because we're trying to remove the charge from her account. And the description is going to be late fee removal. The income account is going to have to match the same income account of the charge. So in this case, it's going to be late fees. This way it actually writes it off instead of writing off a different charge on her account. So we have late fees here. And then for that amount, I'm just gonna paste and it was at $7.14. Scroll to the bottom and click transactions. And now at the top, we can see our pending transactions. So Jane had also done a late fee reversal for her. You can see that listed here and here's Susie's. If we select Susie's name, we can go back to her account. And we can see that this is currently a pending charge. So if we messed it up, we can click delete. Um, or we can wait for it to post. It'll post overnight tonight. And once that posts, it's going to cancel this most recent late fee on her account, bringing her balance down to $856.42. Um, you'll notice on that ad transactions in mass page that you can do a lot of different members at once. So I do recommend going through your members and maybe making a list of all of the charges you either have to add if they miss charges or charges you need to remove. Um, so that way you can do all the members at once, just put in their name, and if this person missed a charge, we can choose charge. If this person had missed um, or actually gotten charged for something she didn't need, we can do credit and fill all those in and do all of these at once instead of having to do it one by one. The next thing I'm going to recommend you do is archive any members that can be removed from your roster. So there's going to be your inactive members that have a $0 balance. To do this, you're going to go to billing, archive member records. And you can see all the members listed here are not eligible to be archived. I've already cleaned this section up. Um, a few weeks ago, but had I not, any member who was an alumnus, suspended, disassociated, um, deceased, any of those inactive statuses that have a $0 balance on their account, will be able to select this checkbox here and click archive members, removing them from our Vault account. If a member is not eligible, you can see right here that there is member notes. So all of these members do not have a $0 balance. And then you can see this person doesn't have a $0 balance and there's a pending transaction on their account. So that was that late fee reversal we did. Um, you may notice this if you were completely writing off an alumni's balance saying it's not worth uh, pursuing, 
You may see that they'll have not a $0 balance, even though tomorrow they will. So it'll say there are unposted transactions for the member and that the member balance is not zero, but if you log in the next day, this member would then have a $0 balance. You'd be able to check the box next to their name and click archive members. The next two cleanup items we're gonna do involves bill pay funds. So if your chapter does not use those, you'll be able to skip these two steps. But if you do use them, you're gonna to go to the bill pay tab and we're gonna start by cleaning up our vendors. So to do that, we're gonna click bill pay and click vendors. And here you'll be able to see a list of your vendors. You can see on my test account here, we only have one vendor listed, that's Omega Phi, but you may have um, a lot more, maybe you only have one. But to review these, you'll be able to click into the vendor right here and go to their profile. If this is a vendor you're no longer using, like an account you'll no longer, or a company you'll no longer have to pay, um, you could scroll down to their page and click Mark Vendor Inactive. In this account, um, I'm gonna leave this one because this is an active vendor, and you can see when we're looking at the list that there is a current balance that the chapter owes the vendor. So that is gonna go to our next step then, is going to bill pay, and we're gonna go to payments. So once you've cleaned up your vendors, you're gonna to wanna to review any outstanding uh, bills your chapter has yet to pay, and you'll be able to see them under this payments screen. Here you can see that they owe $100 to OmegaFi and that it's unpaid. Um, if we wanted to pay that, we can either encourage our members to pay, so money goes into our bill pay funds, and that way there's a balance available to pay this invoice, or we can go to bill pay, click transfers, add one-time transfer, and we'll be able to move money from one of our other accounts into that bill pay fund that needs to pay that invoice. Now that we've updated our vendors and paid off any unpaid invoices, we can move to the final step, which is updating member addresses. To do this, we're gonna click the bell icon and select update invalid addresses. You'll see on this test account, we have a lot of members without addresses and that's because these people aren't real, but for your chapter, you'll probably have a lot fewer. So what you'll wanna do is just scroll through these members, reach out to them if you have to, to update their mailing address, or they can log into their My Omega Phi and update their address there as well. Once you've updated these addresses, you'll be completed with the vault checklist. If you'd like additional help, you can always select this yellow get help button and it'll take you to our help center where we have lots of articles that will walk you through everything covered in this video, or you can reach out to your Megafi support team and we'll be happy to help y'all.